Welcome to Club Academia, where curiosity meets knowledge. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most fascinating and mysterious questions of all time. What is intelligence? Is it just something that humans have, or could machines possess it too? Can intelligence be measured? And how do we compare the intelligence of different species? Stick around because, by the end of this video, you might start seeing intelligence in a whole new light. Let's get started. What is intelligence? So, let's start with the basics. What is intelligence? The most common definition we hear is that intelligence is the ability to learn from experiences, adapt to new situations, and use that knowledge to create a desired outcome. But, here's the twist. If a machine or a robot has the ability to learn from experience, adapt based on past information and achieve goals, can we call such a system intelligent? Imagine this, an AI algorithm learns to play a video game. The more it plays, the better it gets. It adapts to the environment, figures out strategies and outperforms humans. But does this mean the machine is intelligent? Or is it simply following a set of programmed rules and optimizing based on feedback? In fact, if we look back in history, at one time, it was widely believed that a machine could never defeat the best human player in chess. Chess, a game of deep strategy and calculation, was considered to be a challenge beyond the reach of computers. But that all changed in May 1997, when IBM's Deep Blue became the first computer to beat a reigning world chess champion. Deep Blue faced Garry Kasparov, the world's top chess player at the time, in a six-game match in New York City. To everyone's surprise, Deep Blue won with a score of 3.5 2.5, defeating Kasparov in one of the most publicized and shocking events in the history of artificial intelligence. The result was so unexpected that even Kasparov, normally known for his composure, was left speechless. This match was a pivotal moment, showing the world that machines were capable of more than just basic calculations. They could outsmart even the best human players, relying on speed and precision to calculate thousands of possible moves in seconds. But does that mean Deep Blue was truly intelligent? Or was it simply executing a highly sophisticated algorithm, one designed to optimize chess strategies? To answer that, let's look at the Turing test, proposed by the famous British mathematician and computer scientist Alan Turing. The idea was simple. If a machine can engage in a conversation that's indistinguishable from a human's, then it can be said to possess intelligence. But even Turing knew this was a very limited definition. Just because a machine can mimic human-like behavior, does that mean it's truly intelligent? Or is it just a clever mimic? This brings us to another critical point, adaptability. Intelligence isn't just about following instructions, it's about learning, evolving, and adapting. Take humans, for example. When we face new challenges, we tap into our past experiences to make decisions. A machine can do something similar. For instance, Neural networks, a key component of AI, are designed to mimic how our brain processes information, learning from past experiences and applying that knowledge to new situations. In fact, AI systems like DeepMind's AlphaGo demonstrated extraordinary adaptability. AlphaGo was trained to play the ancient game of Go and, over time, learned strategies that humans hadn't even considered. But here's the catch. AlphaGo doesn't understand Go the way a human does. It doesn't have intuition, emotions, or a sense of self. So we have to ask, can we call this intelligence? Now, let's tackle another big question. Is intelligence something we can measure? And if so, how? For humans, we often turn to IQ tests, but many experts argue that IQ is too narrow. It measures things like logic, math, and linguistic skills, but it doesn't account for creativity, emotional intelligence, or practical problem-solving skills. Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences offers a more holistic approach. He proposes that there are different kinds of intelligences, like musical, linguistic, logical, mathematical, bodily, kinesthetic, spatial, interpersonal, intropersonal, and naturalistic. So, the question becomes, should we view intelligence as a single scale or as a broad spectrum of different abilities? Well, if we are to compare intelligence across species, things get even more complicated. When we think of intelligence, we often think of humans at the top of the hierarchy. But what about other animals? Dolphins, elephants, crows, and even octopuses. They all display signs of complex thought, problem solving, and communication. Can we really measure these forms of intelligence on the same scale? Take crows, for example. These birds are capable of using tools, recognizing themselves in mirrors, 
and even understanding cause and effect relationships. So, are they intelligent in the same way we are? Or is intelligence better understood as a series of adaptations to different environments? Now, let's circle back to machines. We've discussed how AI can learn from experience, adapt, and optimize. But is that enough to call it truly intelligent? Are we on the verge of creating something that can surpass human intelligence? And if we do, what does that mean for the future? As AI advances, systems are becoming better at recognizing patterns, solving problems, and even making decisions on their own. But we're still far from creating machines that can experience the world as humans do. Emotions, subjective experiences, and self-awareness remain beyond the reach of current technology. But could we one day create a machine that not only learns and adapts but feels? Could AI possess a form of consciousness? That's the question many scientists and philosophers are grappling with today. So, what have we learned today? Intelligence is not a one-size-fits-all concept. It's a complex, multifaceted phenomenon that includes the ability to learn, adapt, and solve problems. It can be found in humans, animals, and even machines, though how we define it and measure it is still up for debate. As technology advances, we may one day find ourselves debating whether machines can truly be considered intelligent in the same way we think of ourselves. But for now, the answer is clear. Intelligence, in all its forms, is a remarkable tool for survival, creativity, and innovation. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into intelligence. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share it with anyone who loves exploring big ideas. And let us know in the comments, can machines ever be truly intelligent? What do you think? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Stay curious and keep questioning. Until next time, let's continue exploring the wonders of science and technology together at Club Academia.